Hi, and welcome to another episode of Casper on BI. Today, I'm going to do a solo one, a quick one. Today, I wanted to talk to you about XMLA. You might have heard about XMLA and you might wonder what it is. So today, I quickly wanted to talk about, okay, what it is, where does it come from, and what are some of the things that you can do with it? Why is it so important? And why do you hear all these uh, people who've been with an Alice service for a long time always talk about XMLA? And actually, probably a lot of people talk about XMLA uh, in a way that actually is not completely true. So let's talk about it. So XMLA stands for XML for analysis. XMLA is an industry standard for data access in analytical systems. That's how Wikipedia describes it. It is actually already released in 2001. So as I mentioned recently on Twitter, which is quite funny, it's illegal to drink in the US now. That's how old it is. The funnily, everyone talks about XMLA endpoints and XML, so it, this and that, but XMLA by itself doesn't do anything. It is only a protocol for software clients and servers to communicate to the server. Okay, so applications on the client side can talk to a server and the server in this case is an analysis services instance. And the analysis services instance can be analysis services on-prem, analysis, Azure analysis service in the cloud, a Power BI data set, um, or even Power BI desktop on, the, on, the, on your machine. It all has a, an, a server running, an analysis services server running. And the way you talk to that server, that is what XMLA allows you to do. XMLA contains of two SOAP methods. And again, SOAP is all, another old school uh, term, which is being used to communicate. There's two things you can do with XMLA. You can execute commands, which means I want to do things. Uh, I want to send a query. Uh, I want to make changes. We'll get back to that in a second. And the other one is to discover. And with discovering, it means I want to understand what the model is. So tools like Excel or even Power BI Desktop, they send discover commands to the server to really understand what does the model look like, to make, create the field list, what are the field types, all of these things. So what does it enable? What does XMLA give us? XMLA gives us everything. XMLA allows us to, again, discover the model. So Excel, Tableau, Power BI, they all send discovers to the model to figure out what's going on. How many tables does it have? Where are the relationships? Uh, where, where, which DAX measures do we have? Uh, all of these things are in there. But XMLA is also used to send queries. So once you have discovered the model, let's say you have created the field list, you start dragging in fields on a visual, it creates a query that's getting sent back to the analysis service engine. Again, the model is being queried. Creating new measures, importing tables, creating partitions. All of these things are happening through the XMLA protocol. So you can create new models, change existing models, adding partitions, processing tables, partitions, the model. Everything that you do with the analysis services engine goes through XMLA. So what is in it for me? Well, there's two things. Everything we do with the analysis service engine goes through XMLA. So Power BI Desktop creates XMLA, Excel creates XMLA, I already talked about this, but it also enables you, and this is what's so great about it, it has been really an industry standard for many years, and many people don't know it because it's kind of hidden away in Power BI, but it is possible and it's getting more and more possible uh, every day. Because if you want to use a data set for more than what the UI that is currently in Power BI permits. For example, and, and probably our biggest example these days is Tableau Editor, right? If you want to use a different tool, a third-party tool than what Power, but Microsoft supplies to you, you need to use the XMLA protocol. So Tableau Editor uses the XMLA protocol to, for pro development. If you want to do source control, you need to use BISM Normalizer. Um, PowerShell, to create Azure automation, 
to schedule partition refresh and auto partition management. Like today you have incremental refresh and there's refresh, but there's way more to it. Like in analog services, we used to build very complicated systems to have a processing scheme. Like for example, I want to update the, uh, only a certain portion of the data, but I want to create partitions on the fly. I don't want to manually go in and create it. Uh, it's kind of like what we have now in incremental refresh. So in certain scenarios, incremental refresh automatically takes care of that. But if you want to have more fine grained, you have specific needs, you can build it yourself. You can write the code. Uh, you can use Azure automation to automate it and so on and so on. You can write code to generate and update models using C sharp. You can use Management Studio to manage partitions by hand, refresh certain parts of the data, not everything. So there's a lot of it is possible and all of that is through uh, XMLA. So, so how does it work if I go under the covers? So the way that it works is you have something that is called base XMLA. Um, and base XMLA really doesn't do anything, but there is a payload that goes onto, that is being used for multi-dimensional models and tabular models pre SQL Server 2016. As of SQL Server 2016, we have what we call TIMSL, the tabular model scripting language. And then you can start sending scripts to the analysis services engine uh, in a JSON-like format. And you have DAX and MDX. That's also a payload because when you send queries, uh, you just can send a DAX or an MDX query. To the engine now the cool thing here is and and for example that that the timsel will show up in a lot of different tools like for example in tabular editor you will see it in ssms you will see it and it will give you a lot of flexibility so you can just go ahead and script out the model uh store it somewhere and if you make a mistake later again you can just rerun that that script and all of a sudden the model is back in shape you don't have to rebuild everything with power bi desktop and of course, this is also what is being used by uh, when you want to do source control and things like this. So Timsel is really to the heart of everything. Um, now we've talked about a lot about XMLA, but almost never will you actually need to do anything yourself because, and this is where something you've probably heard about it too before, if you know a little bit about XMLA, this is where client tools come in. Because the client tools are wrappers around the XMLA protocol. For example, we have something called adomd.net, which is a, a DLL that allows you to be referenced from your code to discover and query from code without actually having to worry about what the protocol looks like, all of these things. It is nicely formatted classes. AMO, you've probably heard about that too. It is allows you to write code like object oriented, you can say, go, go databases dot and server dot databases and server dot databases dot tables. So you can actually write code uh, to reference all these things in the model. Now that is only for multidimensional models. For tabular models, we have something called Tom, tabular object model. So then you can manage through code your uh, model itself. So that's pretty powerful too. And then again, uh, the, probably the majority of us uh, never really use it. But again, you can use it in PowerShell. You can use it in, in, in C Sharp. So really, if you want to start automating things, a lot starts to open up. And these client tools are being used by all these different products. It's used by SMS. It's used by Power BI Desktop. It's used by Excel. So no one writes XMLA or sends all of these protocols directly to, uh, to the server. Okay. So XMLA is really the protocol that enables all these other tools to use the analysis services engine, uh, as, as we wanted. So, so what does that mean? How can you use it? Well, the good thing is if you want to use it, it is there for you in all versions of the, of the engine. Azure Analysis Services, SSAS on-premise, uh, Power BI Desktop, and data sets in Power BI. But before you can actually use it, and, and if you want to go to the Power BI Desktop, of course, you, you can do it through the external tools. Like when you use a DAX Studio or Vertipack Analyzer or, or any of the external tools, 
they all use XMLA, but again, they're not writing any XMLA themselves. They're using Tom to talk. Usually they use Tom to talk uh, to the engine. But if you want to use those tools against the data set in Power BI, things get interesting because as soon as you do that, those uh, Power BI writings, it, you need to turn it on per capacity. So all data sets in the workspace are accessible if you, as you, when you turn it on. So that means the workspace itself. So if you think about it, if you go back to an analysis services world, you have a server and the server gets accessible. That same server now is a workspace inside of Power BI. So when you turn it on, the whole data sets in that workspace become accessible. There's no more fine granular control in Azure Analysis Services, there is more fine granular controls. You can just do it per data set in the server. But here, the workspace is the server. So it's actually not completely the same, uh, if you will. But because you don't necessarily, it's pretty easy to make a new server. It's not that to make a new workspace, it's not that easy to create a new server in Azure Analysis Services. You have to go spin it up. So it's more easier to be constrained, constrained like that. But if you give someone access to the workspace, they can query it. If you're admin on the workspace, then you can alter any of the data sets in the workspace. You can connect to them in um, through all these XML client tools. Now, the most important thing to recognize here too, and this is where things get a bit tricky. As soon as you touch the data set or in Power BI Desktop with external tools, it gets a bit tricky because there are only certain scenarios that are allowed by the analysis services engine, by the Power BI, actually not by the analysis services engine, by the Power BI desktop. Because if you make changes to it and you now open the same file in Power BI desktop again, and Power BI desktop doesn't understand the model and the way that it's been formatted, today it's pretty hard coded. There's more work needed, which is in the works, uh, but it takes a long time. Power BI Desktop needs to understand the model as it is. They have a lot of annotations. If you actually go in now and actually go see uh, what's going on and how it works, then you will see a lot of the annotations and the things that are working. So that's pretty important. Um, so the thing that I want to call out is be careful what you're going to go do, because if you go in and make changes to it, you might not be able to open it up with Power BI Desktop anymore. So fair warning. Probably, if you want to get to this stage and you want to make a lot of these changes, a tablet editor is okay and it's good enough. Okay. So, in Power BI, and this is really the most important thing if Power BI, you go into a data set and you give it admin permissions, perm whoever has admin permissions can go with XMLA and make changes. Tablet editor, SSMS, all of these things. Now, finally, um, I really want to quickly point out, and actually what I will do is I will send a bunch of examples and links in the description below if you want to read more about it. Um, the finally, the last thing that I want to talk about is a lot of it these days, XMLA is a lot of client tools. So you have to write C sharp, you have to do things in a certain way, but a lot of the world is also moving to rest APIs, which is different than SOAP, which is a different protocol, but it's a bit more modern because REST is where everyone else is at. The future of a lot of these things also REST APIs. So we just re recently released a, 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 a refresh REST API that allows you to do asynchronous refreshes. Or there's a REST API now that sends DAX queries and you can get results. That opens up a lot of scenarios for a lot of other tools because there are a lot of other tools outside the Microsoft ecosystem even that can send REST APIs to something and get returns. Uh, you don't have to use any of our tablet object models and all these things. The mo most important thing is the payloads stay the same. And obviously under the covers in the analysis service or in the Power BI backend, it's using tablet object model and things like this. So that's also important thing to note. Um, the payload stays the same. So if you send a refresh command or uh, to uh, the analysis service engine, it will also use the same Timsel script that I talked about before. So a lot of the things stay the same. So that is a very quick overview of what is XMLA and what does it allow me to do? Um, I, I admit it is mostly for more enterprisey scenarios, more, um, how shall I say it? More, more difficult scenarios 
things when you wanted to go do things like, uh, okay, I want to refresh a partition and a table at the same time, or I want to refresh uh, five partitions, but, but I want to change the parallelism of how many queries get sent to the data source, things like this. If you really want to fine tune, it is possible, but you're going to have to enable things or you have to go do it yourself. So I hope that was useful. And I think with that, I will see you again next time. There's a very exciting one showing up pretty soon. And with that, I want to thank you for your time and I'll see you next time.